So I found this article online that states that there's a growing number of Christians in America that love Jesus but not the church. I found this article very intriguing and unfortunately, you're going to have the pleasure of hearing about it. We live in an increasingly secular American culture. In this new age, religion is in retreat from the public square and traditional institutions like the church are no longer functioning with the cultural authority they once held in generations past. Today, nearly half of America is unchurched. But even though more and more Americans are abandoning the institutional church and its defined boundary markers of religious identity, those last six words are made to sound bad, but doesn't the Bible do a lot of that? It says what a Christian should and shouldn't do, and then it gives us a perfect prototype of what that looks like. Many still believe in God and practice faith outside its walls. Fantastic, all Christians should practice their faith outside of church walls. But a big part of practicing your faith is fellowship. And they're kind of missing that one. This is the first of a two-part exploration of faith and spirituality outside the church. Let's start with a look at the fascinating segment of the American population who, as the saying goes, love Jesus, but not the church. To get at a sense of enduring faithfulness among Christians despite a rejection of the institutional church, Barna created a metric to capture those who most neatly fit this description. It includes those who self-identify as Christian and who strongly agree that their religious faith is very important in their life, but are de-churched. That is, they have attended church in the past, but haven't done so in the last six months or more. These individuals have a sincere faith, but are noticeably absent from church. <sighs> We're already off to a bad start here. Why would you count the 11% that didn't say that? Shouldn't that commitment kind of be a deal breaker on whether we count your opinion on this study? I am getting ahead of myself here though. I should probably just kind of sit back and pay attention. If there are people out there that love Jesus, but have been burnt by the church, then that should be concerning. I should definitely try to hear those people out. And that includes everyone in this group, right? Right? This metric tells us that the number of self-professed Christians who no longer go to church at least twice a year has risen from 7% to 10% in the last 13 years. And 78% of them are Gen Xers and Boomers. There's some other stuff too, but that's pretty much all you need to know. Despite leaving the church, this group has maintained a robustly orthodox view of God. In every case, their beliefs about God are more orthodox than the general population, even rivaling their church-going counterparts. This poll starts to get confusing when it has different groups for practicing Christians and evangelicals. The evangelicals had to meet nine rigorous criteria, and their classification was not based on church attendance. The practicing Christians, on the other hand, have some pretty basic criteria to meet. We're gonna kind of just ignore that part of the poll and focus on the differences between the evangelicals and the de-churched. It's kind of sad actually, because throughout the study, the practicing Christians are often used as a comparison, and they show by their answers that they don't always necessarily practice their Christianity as much as their title suggests. For instance, they strongly believe there is one God, affirm that God is the all-powerful, all-knowing, perfect creator of the universe who rules the world today, and strongly agree that God is everywhere. These beliefs are pretty basic, and many liberal Christians would agree with all of them. I mean, yeah, those are the, like the most orthodox of orthodox views. None of these statements are about Jesus, his sole power to save people, or the authority of scripture, which are still quite biblical, and I would say even orthodox, but much more divisive. Most people believe in a God. Do they believe in the Christian God? Well, that's another story. It's a start, but these are pretty much the lowest common denominator Christian beliefs. Despite their apparent discomfort with the church, this group still maintains a very positive view of religion. When asked whether they believe religion is mostly harmful, their response once again stood out from the general population and aligned with their church-going counterparts. Here's the thing. This article paints this group as a bunch of Christians that have become sick of the hypocrisy of the church or they got hurt by it in some way. They're this rebellious, liberal, hard-hitting, slash hurt, ugly duckling group that insists that you can love Jesus without going to church. From looking at the stats though, they're barely more negative about religion than evangelicals and just as negative as practicing Christians. It seems rather that being edgy or hurt, this group is just mostly indifferent. America has always had a large amount of Christians that believe in God and the most basic Christian beliefs and are willing to go to church, say, two, three times a year, maybe Christmas and Easter. However, if there's no real relationship there, then those that do this will gradually feel less and less compelled to do so as time goes on. God won't give them the desire to go to church as happens with genuine Christians, and darkness can't have meaningful Christian fellowship with light. They'll gradually go less and less and won't make their millennial children go. They didn't have a sudden belief change, they just got more indifferent as time went on. 
I could definitely be going too far on this though because this is a very vague question. There are a lot of definitions of religion out there, some of which I would definitely agree are bad. But the story changes slightly when it comes to the distinctiveness of Christianity. Just over half disagree that all religions basically teach the same thing, much closer to the general population than practicing Christians and even further from evangelicals. In the absence of a rigid religious identity provided by the authority of the church, this group appears to be more affirming of the claims of other religions and open to finding and identifying common ground. Seriously? Almost half the group believes that all religions are basically the same? Christianity has some pretty unique statements, like when Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. Thinking that all religions basically teach the same thing shows that they probably don't really have an accurate view of the gospel. And understanding the gospel is kind of important, seeing as that's how you're saved. So if you don't understand the thing that supposedly saved you in the first place, then... are you saved at all? Due to their enduring religious affiliation and overtly religious faith, this group falls outside of the characterization of spiritual but not religious folks, the topic of next week's article. But one thing they do share is a sense of spirituality. Slightly fewer than 9 in 10 identify as spiritual, on par with practicing Christians, and far exceeding the national average. But unlike practicing Christians and evangelicals, this spirituality is deeply personal, even private, with many preferring to keep spiritual matters to themselves. Only 2 in 5 say they talk with their friends about spiritual matters often. This is less than half as much as practicing Christians, and almost 4 times less than evangelicals, who are known for evangelizing and sharing their faith. When asked specifically about evangelizing, whether they personally have a responsibility to tell others about their religious beliefs, the differences are even more striking. Fewer than 3 in 10 of the Love Jesus But Not The Church group agrees strongly that they have a responsibility to proselytize, compared to more than half of practicing Christians and all of evangelicals. So while spiritual topics may often or sometimes come up, the actual act of trying to convert someone is a low priority for this group. Here we have another example of this group grossly ignoring biblical principles. The Bible is very clear that preaching the gospel is to be a priority, and we're supposed to be mission-minded about that. Not only that, but it should be a natural desire in a Christian to preach the gospel. If you were in a prison and someone came in your cell saying that everyone in the prison was set free, then wouldn't you want to run down the prison telling everyone that they can go? As a Christian, you kind of have to believe that that's one of the most loving things you can do for someone. But 72% of this group thinks it's not a big deal. This shows that they may not either understand the power of the gospel to save people or the pressing importance of it. This group still actively practices their faith, albeit in less traditional ways. They maintain an active prayer life, but only read scripture half as much as the average practicing Christian. In addition, they are much less likely to read a book on spiritual topics and never attend groups or retreats. This all points to a broader abandonment of authoritative sources of religious identity, leading to much more informal and personally driven faith practices. They are certainly still finding and experiencing God, but they are more likely to do so in nature and through practices like meditation, yoga, and silence and solitude. Herein lies the problem. Man's heart is deceitful above all things. All this emphasis on personal means of building your relationship with God is fine and dandy, except that man can often deceive himself. He might think God is telling him something, when in reality his own personal desires are dictating what he hears. So what do we do with all these conflicting ideas? We hold it up to the book God gave us so we can understand him and the way he works. I'm not placing knowledge above relationship when the Bible is clear that a relationship with God is what saves you. But a lot of the growth of that relationship comes through newfound knowledge of God. When over 89% of the de-churched actively practice at least one of these five things, but only 26% actively practice scripture reading? Uh, we have a problem, Houston. Do these people not read their Bibles enough, and as a result misunderstand the importance of the gospel, going to church, evangelism, and reading their Bibles enough? Or do these people misunderstand the gospel, the importance of going to church, evangelism, and reading their Bibles, because they're merely showing fruit of a people whose affections haven't been changed by the Holy Spirit. We will explore this topic of faith outside the church much more in the coming weeks. But one thing that's most worth noting about this group of people who love Jesus but not the church is their continued commitment to faith. This group represents an important and growing avenue of ministry for churches, says Roxanne Stone, editor-in-chief of Barna Group. Particularly if you live in a more churched area of the country, it's more than likely you have a significant number of these disaffected Christians in your neighborhoods. They still love Jesus, still believe in scripture and most of the tenets of their Christian faith, but they have lost faith in the church. While many people in this group may be suffering from church wounds, we also know from past research that Christians who do not attend church say it's primarily not out of wounding, but because they can find God elsewhere, or that church is not personally relevant to them. 
It seems rather that being edgy or hurt, this group is just mostly indifferent. 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 I'm sorry, that was kind of prideful. The critical message that churches need to offer this group is a reason for churches to exist at all. What is it that church can offer their faith that they can't get on their own? Churches need to be able to say to these people, and to answer for themselves, that there is a unique way you can find God only in church, and that faith does not survive or thrive in solitude. The Bible says we are one body, and one part can't say to another, I don't need you. Every joint needs to be connected for it to function properly. 1 John 4.20-21 also states that one cannot love God without also loving their brothers in faith. Going to church isn't just about getting something, it's also about serving and giving to others as well. And if you aren't in a church, you aren't serving. And you also aren't loving the brethren by being absent from them. And 1 John states that loving the brethren is a mark of being a Christian. In Revelation, the church is called the Bride of Christ. At the marriage of the Lamb, she would be presented bright and clean because of Christ's work to purify the saints. So are those that separate themselves from the church on earth going to be presented before Christ at a different time? Like 15 minutes later, it's the bride part two? In 1 John 3.19, John says that a mark of the invalidity of false teachers was that they didn't stay in the church. They departed the church, accountability, and ultimately the truth. At no point in the Bible is the impression given that you should go to church, but I'm gonna leave you the option not to. We're commanded to several times. Those that are truly saved from the world will immediately be drawn to a place where they can fellowship with others who are also saved from the world. Loving Jesus but not the church is an oxymoron because the Bible says that those who love Jesus also love the brethren. You're going to find a strong link with those who consistently pray, read the Bible, evangelize, and have an accurate understanding of God with those who go to church. Because those closest to him and those that know him best know that's important to him. I'm not going to go and make a blanket statement saying, Nobody in this group is saved. Period. I'm sure there are people in this group that have been hurt, and I feel sympathy for anyone in that situation. I also feel sympathy for someone who claims to have a strong relationship with Jesus, but pushes himself away from other believers. Listen and sympathize to those who've disassociated themselves from church, but realize that's not a healthy alternative. Hi, I'm Jay. You probably guessed that already. Um, this is my channel. Uh, yeah, I just kind of made that video, so that was me. I'm that guy. Hi, I'm Jay Velcott from the Jay Velcott YouTube channel. You could like watch other videos, and if you like this one, you could maybe subscribe, because I hope to make similar ones in the future.